So in this video, I just want to explore what the main differences are between Pro Tools Standard and Pro Tools Ultimate. And it's more focused towards people who might be music creators and thinking about whether they want to get an upgrade to Ultimate for whatever reason there may be. Let's just jump straight in. The first thing that we're going to look at is in terms of the differences in I.O. From the June release of Pro Tools 2021, so 2021.6, Avid have upped the input output limitations of the hardware resources to 64 channels on any sound card that you're using. You can now support more than just 32 channels. What previously used to happen is if you went onto channel 33 and 34, the input manager in Pro Tools, what would happen is after inputs to, uh, 32, which might be here, they might actually come up as disabled and you wouldn't be able to have access to them. For most people, I imagine that's actually going to be more than enough for what you need, especially in a music creation perspective. 32 channels would cover my SSL Sigma. And if I wanted to, then I, I could also then have input for the recording of Sigma and then another additional channel's output to actually monitor from, with, uh, which was something I wouldn't have been able to do without complicated patching and working around it in the past. So for most people in music, that's going to be more than enough. I think up to 40 could be great because especially if you look in the like high, high count channels with regards to hardware input monitoring, that would be great. HDX, if we're looking at the HDX cards with the ultimate system, you've got up to 192 inputs and that is using the cards. Pro Tools Ultimate will support the HDIOs, the, you know, the Avid Matrix systems as well, which is kind of based around Dadman. And if you're not running Ultimate, the annoying thing about what Pro Tools do is they don't let you run the HD native card on a Pro Tools standard system and they won't let you run the HDIOs on a standard system either. So you kind of caught you have to have Ultimate in order to run those systems. So you're kind of tied in for that. But the benefits of this hybrid engine and kind of working with plug-in latency and plug-in and also hardware inserts, they're actually like the delay compensation has been calculated for you for that. If we go on from there, then the other main differences is in relation to track count and channel count. Pro Tools standards will run up to 256 channels of audio tracks. And that is across any sample right now. They've just gone, just to make things simple, 256 channels. That's more than what most people will need and it doesn't matter if it's stereo or mono whereas that was a bit of an issue before um, 256 tracks previously might have meant that you only had 128 stereo channels in Pro Tools Ultimate it's a little bit different and it's coming down to the they, they don't actually call them tracks it's called a voice count and in Ultimate you get access to 2048 so almost 10 times the amount of channels but the way in which voice counts actually work is a little bit different. A mono channel will be one voice, a stereo channel will be two voices. And the reason they, they go in this manner is because Pro Tools Ultimate, you also have access to surround sound. So um, a 7.1 system might be eight voices and you've also then started looking at uh, ambisonic setups as well. So I'm just gonna quickly, while I'm doing this, in Pro Tools Standard, you only have mono and stereo, but I've also got these other options now. I've got left, center, right, which is three, three voices, Quad for 5.0, 5.1 with a sub, 7.0, 7.1, 7.02. And then we get into the ambisonic options as well. So first order, second order, and third order amb ambisonics. So there's a lot more options in here for what we want to use it for as well. So that is something to consider as like the surround sound is something that isn't available in standard. You have to have Pro Tools Ultimate to work with that. Um, for music users, you're not really going to be getting into that unless you're looking at exploring ambisonic workflows for say like um, 360 videos, like um, Dolby Atmos as well, which is something that Ultimate will support. And there's a Dolby Atmos plugin, which kind of goes into that. The next thing then is in terms of aux channels and folder channels. Pro Tools Standard gives you 128 channels of aux tracks or folder tracks. In Pro Tools Ultimate, the bump this up to 512. Honestly, for most of my sessions, I'm not even running anywhere close to 128 auxes. If you have gone over 128 auxes, I'd love to hear from you and find out what that was for. And um, there's two other modes of recording in Pro Tools as well, track punch and destructive punch. Destructive punch would mean that if you pressed record on something, it would delete what was ever on that audio file previously and really overdub it with the new recording channel. So if you did that, you'd lose whatever you had before. So it's something I wouldn't really be too confident about using. The only time I've really thought about using um, track punch is in relation to mastering. So say I was running some stuff into an outboard processor and I was going between different tracks. I could kind of set it up for the first one, go down to the second one and kind of just run through the tracks and arm them and disable them as and when I needed it to. But again, for music production, you're normally looking at arming the tracks that you need, pressing record and then forgetting about it. The other thing that comes in with Pro Tools is in relation to the clip effects. If I press option numpad and six, 
This brings up this effect window. This looks very similar to a channel strip. So it's based on the Avid channel strip, which came with Pro Tools 10, Pro Tools 11 was the first time we really saw it when they announced that. So this is based on the Euphonics System 5 plugin. If you notice as I clicked on them, like the clip windows come up with like it's been highlighted, so the color's coming on. So if I change this EQ here, and then say I just like put a filter on as well. What will happen is you notice on these clips now I've got EQ that's come up on the side here. If I added a, um, a compressor threshold, so what you'll see now is I've got um, dynamic on this one, but not on these. So you can actually, what you can do is you can kind of batch, you can batch EQ or batch process the clips to actually follow it. This is something that's available within Pro Tools Ultimate. It's not available to edit in standard, but if I open this up in the Pro Tools standard system, these clip identifiers here would actually come up and say what was happening to them. Where this could be really useful is say that we've recorded something on two different sessions and for whatever reason, the sound of the second recording was a little bit different to the first one. So we might just wanna use the clip gain just to adjust it a little bit to try and match it more closely and then we could actually save we can save presets as well so automation i think trim automation is one that's available in pro tools but i'm not sure if it's available in standard anymore um so trim is where basically like we take it off we've got this option here like trim the fader goes yellow and it means basically like if you've done any trim automation like a yellow line might come up so if you've like on this mix i've used trim just to boost the mix up by one or two db and what will happen is it'll actually if we just go on this base you can actually see where the original like, like the line and stuff is you can see we've actually actually no i've, I've put the base down we've got the trim line showing you what's happening the blue line is actually the automation data that my controller would read and that actually shows you what the original bits what the original values were so it can be useful where there's lots of automation on the track and you get some feedback going i'd like the drums or like all the bass just to go up by one and you could do that either using trim but with standard we do have vca so a lot of people what i probably would do is just set up a new vca and go right drums up um, or you could also look at just using a trim plugin and doing the same thing the other thing with automation if i press command and four in ultimate automation looks like this so command and four on the numpad will toggle it in Pro Tools standard, it's far more it's far more basic than this. Um, what this is useful for is one the area that I might use this window for is like say I'm looping a section. I'm trying to get a balance right between certain parts of the song. Um, I might select a bunch of tracks, put them into automation mode of latch, and then what I could do is I could select this. But if I select a section and then I loop that section, set the levels, anything that's been set to like an automation mode, when I'm adjusting, when I stop it, it will actually fill the final value of whatever whatever I've stopped the value at and actually write it to the start and the up to the end. So you can actually like automate sections, um, but it's just a bit more advanced in terms of the automation that you can do. You can kind of preview and capture sections as well. So the next thing in Pro Tools Ultimate is you have access to more plugins. This is a, something that you can get in standard with a subscription. It's $50 a year. And it's basically every plugin that Avid have made gets included in this. The ones that I'm really using out of those is the Pro Series Compressor, the Limiter. Also really like Space, which is a convolution reverb. And I'm also quite partial to the Mooga Fuga delay. <laughs> and also like the plugins, like the fuzz and the green distortion, I'll use from time to time. If it's just something I need something just to drive through, the yellow distortion is quite good as well. On the Pro Tools Ultimate subscription, he is available and, as, and it's included if you subscribe, but it's also available to both standard and ultimate users an additional add-on at a later point. Overall, that's more or less it. The biggest thing is bigger track count. It's also to do with surround sound, ambisonic workflows that you get in Ultimate. There's a couple more automation modes, but let me know what you guys think. Leave me a comment below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And thanks very much for watching this. Nice one, guys.